Hi everyone, my name is Brian and in this video we're going to take a look at auto-generating documentation with Node and Swagger. Let's get started. Documentation is really important. For any project that you might be using later in the future, a public API that you might be exposing to others, or just a project that other developers are going to help you out on. Documentation is going to help someone get up and running with your application or with your API really, really quickly. But documentation is hard, and most developers really hate to document their code. What we'll be doing today is using Swagger and a couple different packages uh, to auto-generate documentation. So as long as you're properly commenting your code, you will also have API documentation that you can use and leverage the Swagger user interface to test your application and your running API. So it's a really uh, handy tool and will remove a lot of the um, roadblocks that prevent us from creating good API documentation. Let's dive into the code. So over in my editor, I have uh, a terminal session open and we're in an empty folder. With all my uh, development, I really like to use Docker. Uh, this allows me to have a consistent development environment and I don't have to worry about anything being installed locally on my actual machine. I install everything in a Docker container. So let's start by creating a quick Docker run command, mapping our ports and our current um, volume on our host, and opening up a node image. So now that we have an, a running uh, development environment, we can create a new uh, node project uh, by initializing uh, an npm init command. And I just passed the dash y flag uh, so that it will auto-generate and accept any of the defaults. Now that we have a new node project, let's go ahead and install uh, Express. We'll use Express as our API framework to develop our application. So really we just need a simple uh, uh, node API to then practice our Swagger documentation. Uh, so I'll create a uh, file called uh, app.js and run through and create a quick um, express application. Now that we have an application, I like to use Nodemon in my development environment when I'm developing, and that will just watch out for any file changes, reload the application. Uh, it just makes things a lot more, uh, a lot quicker when I'm developing. So let's go ahead and install Nodemon globally. And again, this is only in the Docker container. Uh, this isn't actually installing globally on my machine. So now that we have Nodemon, we can go ahead and run uh, Nodemon. And I found that passing the dash capital L flag in Docker specifically helps to make sure that Nodemon is able to see file changes because we are mounting across the host uh, and the container. So now that we have a running server, uh, on port 4000, I want to go ahead and create our first route. And so we'll create a simple git route called customers, uh, return in the callback, our request, our response. And in our response, let's just uh, return, uh, we'll console log. Now let's, uh, we need to send back just a response and we'll just say uh, customer uh, results. So now when we test our Git endpoint, we should just see customer results returned. And we can test that over here in Postman. So localhost 5000 and then customers. There we are. So we have um, customer results. Now that we have a working API, let's go ahead and take a look at the tools that we'll use to auto-generate documentation. The first is Swagger. Now you are probably familiar with Swagger as a tool and may have used it before. Swagger uh, will help us to document our uh, APIs. It also provides a user interface that will help us to test our APIs, which is pretty handy. The next tool we'll take a look at is called Swagger JS Doc. Now this is an NPM module 
that helps us document our code uh, and generates uh, Swagger documentation from the comments in our code. So this is what really gives the auto generation of our documentation its power. The last tool we'll take a look at is called Swagger UI Express. And this is another NPM module that will take the documentation that's generated by Swagger JS doc and allow it to be served using an Express uh, API server. So this gives us live updating um, API documentation in a user interface, and that user interface can also be used to test the running application. And that's what we'll develop next. Back in our application, let's go ahead and install those two packages that we just looked at. Uh, so simple npm install and swagger. Uh, JS doc and Swagger UI Express. Those are the two packages that we want to pull in. Now that we have our packages set up, let's go ahead and start configuring everything. So we need to create a variable probably called uh, Swagger Options, and that's just a simple object that we will pass into. Um, the Swagger JS doc. Now if we hop back over to the Swagger documentation page, uh, here is the information that we'll be passing in to start. Uh, so we're looking to fill out the info object and that's what we'll pass into it here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the uh, URL for that. Uh, again, it's just on the Swagger.io website. Uh, from here, we can start to define uh, the information that we need for our auto documentation. So we'll start by defining the info object. Uh, so again, if we looked back at our, doc, our uh, the Swagger website, it tells us that we can pass in things like a title, a description. Uh, so that's what we'll put into here. So we'll just say something like my our uh, customer API. Now one important value I do want to call out is that I defined an array of servers and here I just put in our localhost port 5000 API server. What this will allow us to do is actually call uh, and test out our API endpoints from the user interface that we're hosting as part of our Express application. Now just after the Swagger definition object, we also need to pass in our APIs. So basically what this does is tell the documentation generator where to look for our APIs. So for us, I'm just going to pass in app.js because that's the only place we have any routes defined. But if we had a more complex API, I could pass in something like uh, routes slash wildcard.js and that would tell the documentation generator to go and find any APIs that uh, might have documentation in, say, the routes folder, for example. Um, but for us, again, I'm just going to have an app.js file. So next I need to define uh, the swagger docs variable, and this allows us to pass in um, our configuration um, that we just created into the swagger JS doc module. And now we create another um, endpoint. So we'll do app.use and then say slash API uh, dash docs. And then we'll use the Swagger UI uh, module to actually serve the documentation that we just generated with the Swagger JS docs module. Uh, so we use Swagger UI dot serve and then Swagger UI set up, uh, that method will take in our Swagger docs variable that we just defined on line 24. Cool, so that should be everything we need uh, to at least get our documentation there.
So if we start up our application again using NodeMon, our server's running, we can go over to uh, browser and go to localhost 5000 slash API docs. So this is a new um, endpoint for us. And we can see here that we have no options actually defined because we haven't actually told Swagger to generate our documentation for us yet. So let's start by doing that next. Back in our app.js file, under our routes section, in our uh, get customers API route, we can start telling Swagger to generate documentation um, in a comment block. So we just need to preface everything with at Swagger in one of the comment lines. And then from there, we can follow uh, JS doc uh, documentation standards to define what our endpoint is. So here we're looking at the slash customers API endpoint, and below that we'll call it get and provide a description of the information that would be provided by this API endpoint. Now if we hop back over to our browser and refresh, now we can see that we have a git slash customers um, endpoint being defined. Uh, if we click on the route and we open it up, now we have the ability to execute that API request. And here we can see a successful request to our running API. So we see our 200 res uh, response and in the body we see customer results. Perfect. That's what we were looking for. So now we have a fully documented API using auto-generated documentation from Swagger. Now we could definitely um, add some additional information here, all the other response codes that we might expect uh, so that we can test those out as well. Uh, but this is a, a simple example of how we can leverage uh, Swagger and a couple of NPM packages to get um, documentation auto-generated. So now as developers, the only thing that we need to take care of is to comment our API endpoints with some simple information, uh, which we should be doing anyway. And from there, we're able to auto-generate documentation that should stay up to date with our APIs. So if we take the same example uh, and document a put endpoint, um, just change a little bit of information around, we uh, should be able to then um, see the auto generation of our uh, documentation for our API um, show up right away. Uh, so we just created a simple put endpoint Cool. And NodeMon is restarted. So if we refresh our browser, uh, we now see the put uh, Swagger documentation right there. If we expand that, we can go in and test that as well. Uh, so it looks like we have a bit of an error here. Let's figure out what's going on. Oh, we need to make sure the uh, actual endpoint matches. So let's uh, do a quick refresh and do a put to customer instead of customers and execute. And now we see a successful response. Um, so again, we wanna make sure that some of our status codes and everything matches, um, but that is auto-generating documentation with Swagger uh, for your Node Express application. I hope this was useful for you and it's something that you can take and use in your next project.